Hello community, yes we made it, AI Robotics number 5, finally policy. So in the last four videos we had a look at the different methodologies and a deep dive in reinforcement learning on AI Robotics. Now this is a second survey I discovered just some days ago about the use of transformer in reinforcement learning and I would recommend this paper to you if you're interested in a little bit more scientific notation to understand reinforced learning. But however, the main publication that really gives you some insight is here RT1 Robotics Transformer for the Real World Control at Scale, where we learn here robotic policies to solve language condition tasks from vision information. Since this is for the time the last video of this series, let's have a summary of two examples. First, reinforcement learning for a taxi driver in Manhattan and second reinforcement learning for 100 drones exploring Jupiter's atmosphere. Now the situation on a two-dimensional sphere here in Manhattan is easy. It is the Uber problem a Tesla. So let's consider a taxi driver who has to pick up and drop a passenger in a city. So what you have? You have a state this is the current location of the taxi, the destination of the passengers, the time of the day, the traffic conditions, the humidity, whatever you want. Then you have an action. The action could be different routes the taxi could take to reach the destination from its current location. And you have a policy. Now, the taxi driver's policy might be to take the shortest route. And if we substitute a taxi driver with a transformer, with uh, artificial intelligence, then we have here transformer model policy might be to take the shortest route. This is a deterministic policy that we have that always choose more or less the highest probable action. But this policy might not be optimal because sometimes when we have heavy traffic at certain times of the day, now a slightly longer route might be faster. So we switch here in our policy from the deterministic policy to a stochastic policy where the chosen route depends on the probability distribution over all possible routes. So this distribution takes into account various factors, travel time, distance, time of date, historic traffic patterns. So just like in reinforcement learning, the taxi driver learns from experience. Every day he sits in his taxi, every day the transformer gathers data. Over time, the process of learning from experience will help the driver develop a policy that balances here the trade-off between distance and travel time. Now, this is the easy example. We have just a two-dimensional sphere, the surface of the Earth, and one taxi driver. But what about we have a fleet of 100 taxi drivers? Can we apply reinforcement learning? What is the reward function? What are the trade-off of risk and reward functions? So let's take another example. Beautiful, the stormy atmosphere of Jupiter. So here we are now applying reinforcement learning here for the behavior of drones that explore Jupiter's atmosphere. Now, we have here that those drones are learning from their interaction with the environment to improve their performance. So, we use here reinforcement learning to optimize the drone's exploration strategies. They learn how to prioritize areas that are likely to contain interesting phenomena. Or, you have now multiple drones and you can use reinforcement learning to coordinate the behavior. Here we are almost in game tier where we say, hey, do some drones compete against other drones or are they on a mixed strategy? So there has a beautiful multitude of individual and swarm intelligence behaviors. Now, of course, we have challenges. It is really not a trivial task to design a suitable reward function for this particular context where we apply reinforcement learning. You have a function that needs to reflect the mission objectives, but this could be a very complex and multifaceted thing. 
So you want to gather scientific data. You want to conserve your energy. You want to avoid hazards and so on. So you see, on the other side, you have only 100 drones. You need a lot of number of interaction with the environment to learn here for the drones their best effective paths for exploring Jupiter atmosphere. But this can be costly in terms of energy, of resources. You only have 100 drones. So how you optimize here for a not so large number of interaction with the environment? Another thing is safety. If you define your reinforcement learning algorithm, you have the balance of risks in pursuit of rewards. How you fine-tune exactly here this sensitive balance? And of course, generalization. Your algorithm needs to be able to generalize from the experience to handle new situations. We don't know the atmosphere of Jupiter. So a lot of very challenging and very interesting topics that we have to deal with. Now, let's say we dive a little bit deeper into reinforcement learning applied to the drones here. So what can we do? Now, we use here something adapting to the environment to adjust the flight path of the drones. Avoid extreme condition. Then we can prioritize those areas for closer investigation. But really interesting it will become if we coordinate multiple drones, if we have a communication process of either the data gathered or the learning by individual drones, how they integrate this knowledge for the community. Learn how to share information with each other, alert each other on potential hazards, or indicate areas of interest, how you handle failures, Extreme simple task when you think about it, but not so easy to integrate in reinforcement learning algorithms. You have challenges. As I told you, the reward design, the reward function needs to reflect the admission objectives. As I told you, really complex, you have to have a set of experiments to get here the best complex reward design. Something can help you. To learn efficiently there are, let's say, two techniques. You have a model-based reinforcement learning. Think about this is your digital twin that we have a mathematical model of Jupiter's atmosphere. And we learn on this digital twin our reinforcement learning algorithm. Or you use transfer learning. You say, hey, I know from, I don't know, uh, Venus also has a very stormy atmosphere, very dense atmosphere. Can I take something from the learning from the atmospheric chemistry of Venus? Can I apply it on Jupiter? Can I take here my learning from the atmosphere of the planet Earth? Can I extrapolate it to the conditions on Jupiter? And so on. So we have here some beautiful models we can integrate here with reinforcement learning. Yeah, model-based reinforcement learning, you know, a pure mathematical representation. It is like a simulation and we apply this so the drone could use the model to plan here a sequence of action to maximize, as always in reinforcement learning, the expected reward. So we have here a mathematical representation of the environment and we go for a policy improvement. Or if we use transfer learning, as I told you, we have here, for example, pre-training on simulated or earth-based environment before we deploy here the drones to Jupiter. So the drones could learn some basic skills like navigation, obstacle avoidance here in the smooth atmosphere of our planet Earth. Multitask learning or domain adaptation. As I told you, flying in a calm condition, flying in stormy conditions. Can we fine tune here for specific domains? This is a real challenge if you want to code this to effectively transfer the knowledge, especially when the source and the target task are happening on different planets in our solar system. Of course, you can make combination of model-based RL and transfer learning, but now it really gets a little bit complex. <laughs> but you can do it, no, no, no problem. So pre-training, uh, reinforcement learning agent can be pre-trained on a related task where the data is abundant. 
like the flight behavior in Earth atmosphere. We have thousands and thousands of hours how a fighter jet might uh, behave in a storm condition on planet Earth. Multitask learning. We can learn here multiple tasks simultaneously, sharing the knowledge across the task. But careful, those tasks have to have some similar core functionalities. Or again, as I told you, domain adaptation to switch between learned domain behavior. But when is this switching happening? Is it a smooth transition? So there are a lot of things you have to take care of. And I think it's a fascinating topic. If you want to integrate this into the behavior of a reinforcement learning agent, especially if everything runs here on a transformer base. Of course, when we talk about multiple drones, hundreds of drones, we have to talk about swarm intelligence here in the context of reinforcement learning. Yes, this is similar, but now the, the, the methodology, the reinforcement learning becomes a little bit more complex even. So we have here either a cooperative multi-agent settings where the agents share a common goal, or as I told you, you can have a competitive behavior where each agent has its own individual goal, which might be a conflict with the goal of other agents. We are here in pure game theory, so we try to understand this here on a mathematical level, or maybe the best approach is to have a mixed behavior and a mixed multi-agent settings, where each agent has individual goals, where each reinforcement learning agent is, of course, here a transformer-based architecture, but there are also some shared common goals that require some cooperation, like, for example, warnings that are communicated between all our drones, and so on. So if you want to dive deeper into the open problems and the fundamental limitations of reinforcement learning, maybe even if you stay here for the human feedback specification, this here is from the end of July 2023, a real, really interesting paper. And you see here from Cornell, ETH Zürich, Sussex, Berkeley, Harvard, MIT, Cambridge, California, Stanford. There is a really interesting overview of the open problems that we face today with reinforcement learning. And if you want to have a short overview, again here, we have here a human feedback or a reward model, the policy, and then they address here in the different paragraphs of this particular archive paper of this non-peer-reviewed preprint, you see here especially the challenges that they address and the open areas that need, let's say, an optimization to have really a safe AI system. Highly interesting paper. In summary, if you integrate the intelligence that we explore today with our large language model like GPT-4, we integrate it with the visual information we get here from real-time images where we apply vision transformer, for example, to detect all the objects for some real-world models that we have based on transformer where we say, how do we predict the behavior of object in our scene? And we combine it here with robotics, AI-based robotics, where we directly interact with our environment, where we change here with our action, the state of the environment in a continuous way. I think this is a fascinating topic. And with these two examples, I. I try to show you if you example go for exploring an, a new atmosphere in our solar system with 100 drones, how you can combine those technologies and what challenges you would face and what problems we still have to solve for this application. And I think it's a fascinating topic. I hope it was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. It would be great to see you in my next video.